Hello there and welcome to this Astranti Financial Training YouTube video for the August 2019 Strategic Case Study. In this particular video, we are going to be looking through a sample of the pre-seen test pack that we offer here at Astranti. Very recent pack, small pack added to the the lineup of products that we have here at Astranti just to provide a bit of comprehensive testing for the pre -seen. There's nothing very complicated in this. It's just almost a checklist of questions to run through to ensure that you have read the pre -seen properly. And that's very important because the, the pre -seen is given for a reason. SEMA expects you to use information from the pre -seen. They expect you to be well versed in information from the pre -seen. So it is very important that you ensure that you have read it, ensure that you have taken all the appropriate notes from it. And if you do like this video and you'd like to see more of this, we have other videos looking at bits from the pre -seen, looking at exam techniques, looking at objective test exams, if you're, you're still on that as well, then please like the video and subscribe to the Astranti YouTube channel below. So. Without further ado, let's begin our run through this sample test. So first thing we have here is a explanation, pretty much what I have already gone through. That in the actual pack, there are 30 questions, there are only three in this sample pack. And the purpose of it is to give you some background, some understanding to test that you have read and understood the pre seam which is very important as it is the context of the exam and you'll be expected to to relay information from the pre-seen, apply information from the pre-seen to the unseen scenarios that you are presented with. The first question here relates to the risk report. We all remember the risk report from the pre-seen detailing various different risks that were affecting the company Zoom and actions in which they had taken to prevent them. And the question here is which of the following risks to Zoom's operations were not mentioned in the risk report. And so we have a series of five risks here that were all prevalent throughout the pre-scene, but which of these were actually mentioned in the risk report? So let's look at each of those in turn. As it's a select all that apply question here, so it could be that four of them were mentioned in the report. It could be that two of them were mentioned, one was mentioned, or three was mentioned. So let's look at governance. Now, there wasn't particularly much in governance in the pre-scene. There was a board of directors and there was some information about that. And there were a few things that they weren't complying with the code of governance. So, for example, there was a Jalen code of governance. And one of the codes or principles of the code of governance is to have a separate CEO and chairperson, of which, of course, Zoom do not have the same person is the chairperson and the CEO. So that is a governance risk there. But remember that we're a private organization. So there's no obligation to mention governance. So and there was nothing about that in the specific risk report. So we can tick that as we know that was one of the risks. Now on to competition, there was plenty about competition in the risk report, spoke about the competition that it faces from big competitors such as Optin, but also the competition it faces in the driver's car market and the importance of setting the standard, the importance of being the first. So we do not need to tick that because that was mentioned in the risk report. Now on to liquidity. Again, no mention of this in the risk report, but it was a substantial risk to the organization. The company was loss making. The company had lost money over the previous year, not just in its profit and loss, but also according to its cash flow statement. There was a negative cash flow, a net cash loss in the previous year. So mention that. So that was a risk. That is a risk to their operations, but it was not specifically mentioned in the risk report. And finally, we have employment issues and safety issues, both of which were mentioned in the risk report, specifically with regards to safety and if people are injured whilst using our services, if there's an injury or an accident caused by one of the driverless car systems, issues over liability, and also employment as well. We have lots of issues with employment because of the fact that a lot of our drivers rely on us, depend on us for their income, depend on us for their primary source 
of funding and financing for their own lives and yet we do not call them employees we do not guarantee them a certain amount of work we argue this improves the flexibility but at the same time perhaps it is having a negative impact on those employees if they cannot receive steady work as a result of using our systems and being self-employed through our systems so everyone happy with those two out of five let's click to see if that was correct and yep you can see here and we've got the answer that liquidity and governance are all or both mentioned regularly and can be also inferred from the nature of the industry and from the precinct itself yet there was no mention of them in the risk report and not only is this a question of did you get it right or wrong or not in whether you mentioned whether these were in the risk report but it's also a part of a greater symptomatic of a greater issue that perhaps there is a failing from a risk management perspective here. perhaps the organization has not been able to install a culture of risk management a culture of risk awareness throughout the organization and therefore they are hitting roadblocks when it comes to creating risk reports because there are certain things they are just not considering now on to the next question, which relates to Porter's generic strategies and which one is being used at Zoom. And of course, generic strategies relates to both the, the way in which you compete and also the market that you are competing to. You can have a, a broad focus appealing to everyone or a very narrow focus where you are just looking at a set market. And then you also have to look at how you're going to compete. Are you going to be different That's a differentiation? Are you going to offer something that no one else offers? That could be the quality of the product. That could be the end result of the product. That could be the way in which you yourself operate. Do you perhaps donate to charity? For example, fair trade coffee. There's nothing different about fair trade coffee than regular coffee in terms of the end result. It's still a cup of coffee or still a pack of coffee grounds. But people are willing to pay more for fair trade coffee because of how it is produced. Not because it improves the quality, but because it's and from an ethical perspective. It's beneficial, more beneficial to the farmers that grow the coffee. So we can narrow down what's going on at Zoom here. We do only appeal to the Jalen market, but we appeal to the entire Jalen market. We're not targeting very specific demographics. We're not targeting very specific cities or towns. And so we definitely do not have a focus strategy because of the fact that we are appealing to a broad marketplace we're not going after a niche market so that leaves us with differentiation and cost leadership and it could be argued that we are somewhere in between or we are leaning towards differentiation because we are a very charitable organization we provide a much better return to the drivers than our competitors so going back to the fair trade coffee example but it's difficult to say that we are outright in the differentiation category because we don't necessarily offer a service that is that much different to anyone else but by the process of elimination we can still go for differentiation here because we know that we are not a cost leadership because cost leadership relates to nothing other than being the cheapest provider in your market which we are not and therefore we must be differentiation as you can see, that is the correct answer. We're offering a high value service because we do cost a bit more. We do offer a bit more of a, a service, though, in that we do donate to charity and that we do pay our drivers more. So from a, a moral perspective, which perhaps will appeal to younger demographics, that is the strategy that we are operating. But it's not 100 percent conclusive. So there is the risk here to when you're thinking of generic strategies of being stuck in the middle. We're not really going after one market or the other and finally the third question in this sample the company may want to take advantage of developing economies as their access to technology and smartphones improves we know the company doesn't have any plans per the pre-scene but if they perhaps do if there's a good opportunity somewhere they would be wise to still consider it so what kind of strategy would it be to take advantage of developing economies as their access to technology and smartphone approves could it be product development you think about your ansofts product development means you are taking a new product and applying it to your existing market 
So developing economies means different countries, countries that are developing, hence the term. So are we really offering a new product to an existing market if we try to sell our services into a new country? No, because it's not a new product. It's the same product and it's not the existing market. It's a new market, so it can't be that. We have diversification. This is where you enter a entirely or completely different market altogether. So we're not going to worry about selling our services as a transport network company into Jayland anymore. We're going to move our head office to Neighborland and in Neighborland we're going to set up a pizza franchise business. That would be an example of diversification. It's an entirely new product to an entirely new market. So again, it's not that. Emergent strategy, this goes off on a tangent from the uh, the ANSOS. It's not part of the ANSOS, but it is still an important strategic tool. Emergent strategy is where you have a strategy and you uh, either adapt your strategy or you create a new strategy midway through the process as new information dictates. But that's not the case here because we're not creating a new strategy based on further evidence. We are designing the strategy from the start, so it cannot be emergent strategy. So finally, we've got market development and market penetration. Now, the difference here is that both of them are appealing to the, uh, the same product, using the same product. But one of them is taking that existing product to a new market. Now, market penetration is where you just try to expand your existing market with your existing product through discounts or offers. So if we were to try and expand our market share within Jayland, that would be market penetration. Of course, we're looking at a developing economy here. So we're taking our our formula, our formula that we know that works, we've seen it work in Jayland, and we're taking it to a developing economy. So that is a market development strategy. And just to double check, yes, that's correct. Based on answers, it would be a market development strategy, it's the same product in a new market. And also another important thing here for you as strategic students to consider is the level of risk, which is part of your role in this case study is to identify risk. And this would be considered a medium risk strategy as we know our service, we know our service well, but we do not necessarily know if it's going to adapt well to this new market. That's where the risk lies. There might be cultural differences, there might be social differences, there might be differences in the speed in which the mapping software works, the way in which the app software works. So there may be some risks that we have to deal with. So that brings us to the end of this summary sample section. So if you do want some more questions, you can pick those up on the Astranti website. We can also Oh, you can also take a look at some of the various different other products that we have. We've got analysis videos for the pre-scene, one's looking at the models that are relevant to the pre-scene, one's looking at issues, the industry. In total, there's over seven hours of video content and lots of material to read through as well, including this question pack, all included in our total pre-scene or complete pre-scene pack. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you have a good idea of what this product is about and also have learned perhaps a couple of things about the, the case study that maybe you could apply to other material within the case study just to ensure that you are well-versed in the, the pre-scene and how important it is that you are well-versed in the pre-scene for the exam. Once again, if you have enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more of them, then please do like the video and also subscribe to the Astranti YouTube channel at the bottom of your screen.